So it's all about coming up with the common denominator, right, Hannah? It's all about having a common denominator. Once I have a common denominator, I'm pretty good. Another issue that we encounter is just, we have too many fractions on one side. Like up here in question number one, notice we have two fractions on the same side, correct? Um, let's start, instead of starting with number one, let's start with number two, because that one looks easier. Wouldn't you agree, Hansi? Okay, we just have two fractions on either side. Now in algebra, you guys learned about proportions, right? Did you guys ever learn about like percent out of a hundred equals is over of? Same principle, right? You have percent out of a um, hundred equals is over of, and what did you do? Cross multiply, right? And divide by the lonely guy. Same thing here. So let's look at number two. Okay, notice I have one fraction equaling another fraction. Okay, they both have the same denominator, agreed? So if they both have the same denominator, then what do we know about the numerators? Lance? They gotta be the same, right? So we can quickly see that we can get 2x minus, or 2x minus 4 equals 4. And then we get 2x equals 8. And then x equals four. That's it. Because we know the two fractions are equal. Now the whole part with the cross multiply and divide by the lonely guy, that's like the hard one, right? Carolina? Yep, we'll get to that. Okay. So to do it the other way, okay? So this is like one of my options. There's not gonna be like always one way to do these, okay? That's the whole point. There's multiple different ways, all right? The cross multiply and divide by a lonely guy says, okay, well, I can do two X minus four times X minus four equals, four times x minus four. And then I can distribute this to get two x squared minus eight x minus what? Four x plus 16 equals four x minus 16. Clean this side up to get 2x squared minus 12x plus 16 equals 4x minus 16. All right, and this is probably where you guys are getting like confused, right? Because we're we're using the wrong method. You have to think smarter, not harder, right? So if we keep going with this. All right, to get all the x's to one side, we have 2x squared minus 16x plus 32 equals zero. This all shares a two, so divide everything by two. We have x squared minus 8x plus 16. We get zero. What are the factors, Hansi, of 16 that add up to negative eight? Well, that adds up to 16. So it's gonna be X minus four and X minus four. Notice here we have an answer X equals four, okay? So notice we did it two different ways. This way was obviously much more difficult, agreed? Okay, but I was still able to attain the same answer. All right, yet again, another way to do it. All right, we talked about it. We have 2x minus four over x minus four equaling four over x minus four. And then I said, hey, we can multiply it by the common denominator, which is x minus four. 
All right, so I would do this times this fraction and times that fraction. That was x minus four times the quantity of two x minus four over x minus four equals four over x minus four times x minus four. And then we saw that this cancels with that, this cancels with that. And then notice that brings us back to like that original problem that we did, right? Where we had 2x minus 4 equals 4, and we had 2x equals 8, and x equals 4. No matter how we do it, we still get x equals 4. Agreed? You guys see that? Those were kind of like what we were doing yesterday. All right? All of it revolved around a common denominator. Now, x equals four, Kailana brought up a point. Once you get x equals four, you have to plug that back in to see if that makes sense. And Kailana, you said it doesn't make sense. Why does that not make sense? Can't have zero as a denominator. When I plug in four, notice when I plug it into that, I have four minus four, but zero. So is there an answer to this? No. This one has no solution. But there's a few things that I want to bring up to you to pay attention to. Don't forget the basics, all right? Don't forget, if you have two fractions that have the same denominator, try to get them together, combine them. If you have them equal to each other, like we do in number two, Okay, we can set the numerators equal to each other. Makes our life a little bit easier. Do you guys see that? Now that we, I've told you not to forget the stuff you've already learned, let's look at number one, okay? Number one looks more complicated. It is a little bit more complicated. But Julia, I want you to know something. Do you see how this fraction here and this fraction here both have a common denominator of x, why not bring them together, right? If I bring them together, then I simply have one fraction equaling another fraction. I don't have to kind of like make common denominators. I could cross multiply, all right, and then go from there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this to the other side. They cancel. I have negative two over x plus one equaling. Well, I have three over x minus or four over x minus three over x. It's just one over x. So that's what I have now. Chris, do you see that? Does that clean things up a little bit? No common denominator. I don't have to multiply by x times x plus one. Like you would cross multiply there. So I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to do x times negative two. That's negative two x. So I'm going to do one times x plus one. I have that. And then Justin, I'm asking you to solve that. All right, so what would you do to solve that? Well, remember, don't for, well, don't forget the basics, right? The basics are to get all the x's to one side. So how do you get rid of that plus x? Yeah, so I subtract that. That gives me negative three x equals one. And now, Justin, I can divide by that negative three. And I get x equals negative one third. Now, Kailani, you seem to be the expert on this. Is that an okay answer? Yeah, that's an okay answer. Because if I plug in negative one third, I don't get zero in either one of the denominators. Hannah, you okay? Not panicking as much, correct? Still panicking a little bit? That's good. You should be nervous. It's always good to be nervous. 
All right. I'm nervous every day. No, I'm nervous about the fact that I might forget a belt one day. It's the worst. It's game over. No, I was very confident in that race. Very confident. Who? John Rocker? I thought you said Rockefeller. I was like, I'll be that dude. That dude seems pretty cool. You mean the guy? I mean the that guy from the baseball game. Great. Oh yeah, no, I ain't afraid of meeting him. I I I don't think we'll ever meet him and I. That would be good. Yeah, so we're good to go here. Okay, we have x equals negative one third. All right, let's go to number three. Let's go to number three. Okay, before I even start, I'm kind of feeling I might have two answers. Okay, do you see why I would feel that way, Hannah? See that x squared? Yeah. Telling me I might have two answers. I don't know yet. I haven't done this problem. All right, but I'm looking for two answers, hoping that I have two answers. Okay, now I'll try to eliminate some once I get them. But who knows? Now here, Leah, do you see how all of these are different? Right? So I can't do any of those tricks like we did in number one, where I had two fractions that were the same and I just brought them together. All right. So now I have to figure out how do I go about attacking this problem? All right. Do I, you know, maybe come up with a common denominator and then look to multiply it? Okay. Or do I look to like combine everything and then set the numerators equal to each other? But first things first, either method, I need to find a common denominator. Right, Justin? Now, I'm looking at this one. Do you see why I would look at this one first? The x squared minus 2x. Do you see why I would look at that? Okay. Let's look at this one. Can I factor that? Can I factor that? It look like a factor that? So that's why I'm going to start here. It's a good place to start. Factor everything. See what you got. So I'm going to factor out the x, like you said. When I do that, I have x times x minus 2 plus 4 over x equals 5 over x minus 2. Chris, what would my common denominator be? And what a, and x, right? X times x minus two. Wouldn't you agree, Chris? All right. So my distinct pieces are x's and x minus twos. So I'm kind of feeling maybe I should multiply everything by x times x minus two, right? So Go ahead and multiply everything by x times x minus 2. So I have the 10 over x times x minus 2 times x times x minus 2. plus x times x minus 2 times 4 over x equals 5 over x minus 2 times x times x minus 2. Hansi, you soaking it all in? Notice this fraction right here, the first one, the x's cancel and the x minus twos cancel. I'm left with 10. You cool with that, Hansi? In the second fraction, that middle fraction, the x's cancel. I have four times x minus two. Four times x is four x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 equals 
Thank you, Grantley. You see where I got that? In the fraction furthest to the right, the x minus twos cancel. And I have five times that. So I have 10 plus negative eight, that's two. So I have two plus four x equals five x. And I have two equals x. Now, when I started, I was looking for two answers, right? I only came up with one. That's okay. All right. I was looking for it. I was expecting it. I didn't get it. That's all right. Okay. But to start with something, to start somewhere. Okay. I started with, hey, I think I might have two answers. All right. I have X squared. I need to be on the lookout for that. Hey, where should I start this from? Well, I should start here in the first fraction because it's X squared minus X. Maybe I can factor that. Where can I go from there? Lance. And then that's our last step. Once we have the answer, we have to plug it back in. Did it work? No, it didn't work. It's extraneous, okay? It doesn't work because when I plug two in, I have two minus two, that's zero. So this actually doesn't have a solution, okay? The second method? I believe so. Four times negative two. Okay. Any questions? Justin, you all right? All right, question number four. All right, with this one, I'm kind of already noticing, hey, I have two fractions. The denominators are X plus ones, right? Probably get them together. They should probably hang out sometime, all right? So how do I get rid of a minus five over X plus one? That. Now, even though the numerators I can't really do anything with, it's still helpful to have everything with the same denominator together. So that's 5x plus 5 over x plus 1 equals 4 over 1. Why would I put it over 1? Hey, cross multiply and divide, right? Might help me out. So I have one times the five X plus five, that's five X plus five equaling. I have four times X plus one, well, four times X is four X. And four times one is four. Now I'm going to get all the x's to one side. It gives me x plus 5 equals 4. Subtract 5, x equals negative 1. Did you follow me to here? Yeah. Subtract the 4x. Give me x. So x plus 5 equals 4. Oh. And then subtract 5. X equals negative one. Now, either Kailano or Lance is going to tell me what doesn't work. Is that X equals negative one? All right. So once I get the answer, the next part is I have to go back and plug it in. Yep, right there. Remember, I moved the X first. So I moved the four out. So I did that. Five minus four is one. Those cancel. And then I have X plus five equals four. All right.
I always move the smaller axis. I don't like dealing with negative numbers as much. All right. All right, last problem for the day. We have two X plus one divided by X minus four equals 16 divided by X squared minus 16 plus three. Okay, obviously I can't do any of those tricks by combining fractions that have like denominators. So Justin, where, where do I want to start here? Uh, yeah, I want to factor. What do I want to factor though, Hannah? What is it factored to? Yeah, what is this factor to? X squared minus 16. So think about it. What are the factors of negative 16 that will give me zero? Four and negative four. Thank you, Grandlin. What's going on? Okay. All right. How do we want to proceed? Okay, okay so you want to multiply everything by the common denominator? Okay, what is the common denominator? X minus four. Nope. X plus nine. Nope. It's only part of it. X plus four and X minus four. Oh. So I'm going to multiply everything by X minus four times X plus four. Now I don't have as much room as you guys do. Plus my board's not. The day it goes on, it becomes less and less aligned. All right, so go ahead and do that. And then I'll write up, I guess what you should get. This has to go to all of it. Yep. Did you get it right, Julia? Now, I'm going to get everything to one side. It's going to be the side with the larger x squared. So I'm going to move everything to the right. So I'm going to subtract 2x squared. You got 9 x So 2x times the 4 is 8x. 1 times the x is 1x, 8x plus 1x, 9x. So I'm going to move the x squareds over to here. All right, that's going to give me x squared. And then I'm going to move the 9x over to that side as well. There's no place to combine it. So I have minus 9x. 16 and 48 is negative 32 minus uh, 4. Well, that's going to be negative 36. Equals 0. Now I got to think what are the factors? Chris, you look puzzled. So 
So again, I want to find the uh, factors of this. So what times what gives me negative 36, but adds up to negative nine. Yeah, I'm running out of room now. So I did 16 minus 48, negative 32. And then I moved the four over. So the factors of negative 36 that add up to negative nine are negative 12 and three. So I have X minus 12 and X plus three. So my two answers are X equals 12 and X equals negative three. Remember, you have to solve this. So you have to set each piece equal to zero. Now, I'm going to go back and see, do they make sense? Can I plug three in? Yeah. Three works. I don't get anything funny. Plug 12 in, it works. Nothing funny. All right? Any questions? All right. Web assigned 6.5 is due Monday. 6.6 six is due not this Monday. With the following money, because you guys have a quiz on Tuesday. There are two parts to the quiz. There is a in-class open-ended portion. Okay. So you guys will get that paper. You'll have to do it on the paper. Then you'll have to turn that in. Okay. Those of you online, okay, I will post it. And then you'll have to submit it. Okay. That is due before the end of class. Got it? All work needs to be shown. Then the multiple choice, okay, that can be done a little later in the day. Okay, so if you finish the open ended, you can start that. All right. If you uh, need more time for that, which I know some people will, right? Right, Jake? I need a little bit more time. Okay. You're thinking like three hours. Maybe. Okay. But if you need a little bit more time because you took more time in class, that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'll, I'll allow that to be open um, for a period of time after school. Sound good? Uh, and I know it's a little different now because you guys are in class. Okay. Everybody's in class. So that time will probably be like, um, Feel something like, I don't know, what time do you guys get done practice? Lance, what time do you guys get done practice? So I'll probably give you guys to like maybe like six o'clock to get the multiple choice done. Uh, we'll see. No. I, I'm just trying to be like, yeah, maybe Grandly, I, I can work with you individually, but I'm trying to make sure. Our, I got like all my bases covered because you guys stay here, right? After school, you don't go home. You go home and then come back. But you don't get home till like two. Yeah, you stay here. So you stay here. So you, if you stay here, obviously you're gonna have a little bit more time to work on it, but I don't wanna penalize people that are doing sports. All right, hold on.